What's up everyone? Welcome back. This is Dan from DHTV and today we're going to be taking a look at the Sony ZV-1, a camera built for YouTubers, TikTokers, Instagrammers, and content creators. Let's get started. All right, so we've got the Sony ZV-1 right here. I just picked this up. I'm going to be transitioning my YouTube videos over to this camera, which may be a downgrade in a sense, but it's gonna make things a lot easier. From the picture, this looks like a standard digital camera, but what Sony did was they made the focus of this camera for creators, and that's going to make things so simple for you, especially when it comes to product reviews for tech channels. It instantly can focus when you go in and out as you can see with this camera, it's blurry until I bring it back to the area I've set the manual focus. So that's going to help a lot. It's great for vlogging and it even comes with the dead cat up top. So it's going to help with wind noise. You can pick up packages that come with this tripod that has some buttons and abilities to it. Just showing you around the box here how it looks. We'll take a closer look, but you can see right there, there is a shoe mount so you can connect accessories and some accessories on the side here that you could also pick up. I strongly recommend you grab yourself a second battery. That's one thing with these cameras, the battery life is not that good. I'll link you to the batteries that I picked up. They're not Sony branded, but uh, they will do the job. And I'll also link you to this camera in the description as well. So let's open this up and see what you get inside. All right, so you're gonna get some simple manuals, paperwork. There's the dead cat right there. Looks like we have the camera. So there's the camera. It's actually a little bit larger than I thought it would be, but uh, we'll take a closer look at that after. It does have the flip out screen so that if you are vlogging, you can utilize that as well. But like I said, we'll uh, take a closer look a little bit later. You're gonna get your charging cable. I believe it's micro USB. Yes, micro USB. And lastly, a battery, which I totally forgot and missed in the box. It's kind of stuck on the side, but there it is. Very small, very compact. So once again, this is everything you're going to get inside the box with the standard version of this camera without the tripod. So pretty much everything you need here except for an SD card, which I'll link you to some that I'm going to use in the description as well. You wanna get yourself a good one since this does shoot 4K. So let's actually take a closer look at this camera and I'll show you what it can do. All right, now taking a look up top here, we have some buttons. Let's just quickly go over those. The first one is your on off switch here. If you press on that, you'll see that the lens sort of extracts outwards. You do see a green LED light. You'll also notice an LED light here when you plug your device up to a charger so you know it's charging. Second button is for modes. When you access that, pressing on it will bring up the modes on your display here. So that way you can access each one. You can use the control wheel here to move between all the different modes. There's a brief description of what they all do. We also up top have a dedicated record button. You'll notice that with the red circle. Anytime you wanna record a video, you can just press on that. We have our shutter button here. So that's to take pictures, focus in. And in front of it, you're going to have your zoom. You'll be able to zoom in and out right from here. This is another benefit of having the locked in or dedicated lens. Everything's done this way. So when you power it off, it sort of hides right back into itself, making it a little bit more pocketable. Lastly, we have the C1 Custom 1 button there. Now up top, you'll see that there's a large grill and this is actually housing your internal microphone. To the right of that, you have your shoe mount. It has a little cover. You can just pop it right out, take it out, and that'll allow you to install things like the windscreen that comes with the camera itself. Installs really simply too. You just line up the edges there and then just press it right in. That's how it's gonna look if you have that windscreen on there. Looking at the screen side of the camera, obviously the screen being the main attraction, it's a seven and a half centimeter LCD screen. It does flip outwards, allowing you to see the screen while you're say vlogging. You can also flip it back and close it up. Very clear and easy to use screen. This is not a touch screen, so keep that in mind. That brings us back to the front side here. First, we have the function button, which also works. If you're viewing, you can use it to send it to your smartphone. You have the menu button here, which will take you through to all of your different menus, like normal, 
everything this is uh, usually what's on most cameras you cannot touch which is a downfall for this it's really easy to just touch across rather than have to press upwards on the wheel and then kind of work your way I find that to be a little bit of a downfall because I'm used to touch screens with my Canon but uh, that's all right menu is also used mostly as a back button too the control wheel allows you to navigate we talked about that in the center that's your selection button so anytime you want to select anything you'll use that then there is your preview or play there at the bottom. So you can use that to play back videos or preview anything you've taken a picture of. And then finally, the garbage can button here, which is going to allow you to trash anything that you've taken pictures of or videos of. On the side here, we do have some ports. You can see that they're individually labeled there. They also open up individually, which is very nice. The first one is the microphone port. You'll see it in red. So if you have an external mic, you can plug that up. The second one is the multi port and that's basically your micro USB port here so you can plug up things, especially your charger through that port. And then lastly, if you want to plug up via HDMI, you have that little port there as well. So you can utilize that. Lastly, on the side, you have a little space for a lanyard if you do want to connect that up. I personally don't use that. One more thing on the back here, you do have a nice rubberized feel here so you can grip it nicely while you're holding the camera. Forgot to mention that earlier, but it is there, it's nice. It does feel pretty soft, but sturdy. Moving to the bottom here, that's where we have our unlock and lock for the battery pack. It unlocks really easily, the battery goes right in, and there's the battery. Very simple, your SD card is also going to go in there. You can kind of see the hole right here, so you have the space for that as well. Also in the middle, you can mount this up using a tripod right here. There's also your speaker right there very hard to see very small on the front side here we do have our timer light self timer light right there and then your lens on the front sony branding on the side branding at the bottom right as well all right so we've switched over to the sony zv1 for the audio so you can hear exactly how this three capsule microphone sounds throughout the rest of the video. And with that, let's get into some of the specifications. Now, this is a 20.1 megapixel camera that can shoot 4K video up to 30 frames per second. You can up the frame rates if you're willing to shoot in 1080p, which for most content creators and influencers is the sweet spot in terms of file size and quality. The autofocus on this camera is the best that I have seen. It has a real-time eye autofocus, which is perfect for vlogging. It's extremely accurate and it's super fast. For product reviewers, the product showcase setting takes the autofocus game to a whole other level. It just knows when you have a product and it's able to focus on it, follow it, and it does it extremely fast. Now image stabilization is always important and with the ZV-1 combined optical and digital image stabilization it does a really good job when you're walking or driving but if you up the activity level to say a run or action based activities it really starts to fall off. As mentioned earlier this camera has a three capsule microphone which we're listening to right now and it records pretty decent audio for an onboard mic. This is going to save you the hassle of connecting an external microphone when you're vlogging. However, you do still have the versatility to do so if you like. Battery life is pretty much what you would expect for a small camera like this. The battery is pretty small as it is and it runs me about an hour to an hour and a half depending on what I'm doing with the camera. The biggest issue is out of the box, the only way to charge the battery is by plugging up the camera via USB, which in turn makes the camera almost unusable for the most part until the camera is charged. So I grabbed a couple of extra batteries that come with a charging dock, so this way when I'm charging one battery, I can pop in the other one and still use the camera. There's a link to those in the description if you're interested. Now this camera is packed with additional features like panoramic photos, super slow motion video, skin smoothing effects, bokeh control, meaning that you can control the blurred background and create those cool portrait mode effects that are so popular today. You can easily transfer movies to a smartphone and so much more. So should you buy the Sony ZV-1? Well, if you're starting out or if you're just a beginner and you want to up your content creation game from, say, your smartphone or a GoPro, then this camera is a great choice. And if you're a vlogger, this camera is the best option, in my opinion, in terms of price, video quality, and portability. 
For product reviewers such as myself, this camera's features are going to make the filming process much easier and still offer you a very crisp 4K professional looking video. So what do you think of the Sony ZV-1? Let me know in the comments below. I'm interested to know what you guys think. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one, and click the bell notification box to be notified when I post new videos. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.